people a, a basic overview of like what a concussion is. And then I guess in, in my mind, like why it should be taken seriously, because I still think largely in our culture, it's like, oh, you got your bell rung, like it, all of sport culture, but it's all like, oh, you're fine. Just a little head, like just shake it off, like give yourself a minute and keep going. Like I think people underestimate the traumatic nature of it, you know? So can you share some light on that? Yeah. So um, the definition of a concussion, it's basically, it's a functional injury to your brain. So structurally, nothing is different. So if you did a CT or an MRI, that would look normal. Mm -hmm. There's no brain bleed. um, There's no swelling in the brain, but the way your brain is functioning is different. And we don't, like scientists don't 100% understand it, but what we think happens is that there is this functional injury. So it's kind of like your brain kind of gets squished or like sloshed around inside your skull. And that changes the ion balance in the cells. Mm -hmm. So certain things go out of cells, certain things come in. And to restore that balance, you need um, energy, so ATP. But what happens at the same time is there's decreased blood flow to to the brain. And so there's like this mismatch between what your brain needs and what's getting there. Um, And so that takes a while to recover. So something is definitely injured, yeah. but we just can't see it. And that I think is what makes it really hard. Um, I always tell people like, Hey, if your arm's broken, I put a cast on it and everyone can see your arm is broken. Or if you got an x-ray, you could see, Oh, it's broken. We can't do that with a concussion, but we know the way kids act um, and the way they're feeling is different. I guess is Um, what should people be looking out for then? Like what are the more common symptoms or signs that someone should be aware of versus just like, uh, you know, we're okay here. Yep. So headache is a big one, um, but that's not the only one. Um, so feeling just kind of not right. Yeah. Um, like if you're dizzy or just like things are, it's a little bit harder to process. Um, I think foggy or, is a term people use a lot. Yeah. Foggy yeah. is great. Um, or just slowed down. Like they're a little bit slow to respond or, you know, their reaction time doesn't seem as quick or they're not quite as alert. Um, bright lights bothering you or loud noises bothering you. Those are real common. Um, feeling a little nauseous is pretty common. Um, those are the big ones I'd say initially. Um, a lot of times after concussion, people have sleep symptoms, either they want to sleep more, sleep less, they have trouble falling asleep. Those are pretty common. Um, and then, Oh, what was I going to say about that? Oh, and then trouble at school or trouble Mm. with screens. That's pretty common. And then just being like irritable or more emotional um, is pretty common. And so a lot of times, you know, like if, for example, at the football game, um, my athletic trainer who knows my athletes really well, and I don't know them as well, if the kid comes off and they're acting goofy, if they always act goofy, it's great. But if they're like, oh, that's not their personality, um, then we get a little concerned. Um, and, and then oh, I was going to mention too. Um, so a lot of people are like, Oh, if you didn't get knocked out, it's not a, concussion. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's a big thing. That's not true. Um, so only about 10% of concussions lead to loss of consciousness. So 90% of them are not. Um, so if you do get knocked out, there's, you know, a higher likelihood that you have a concussion. Again, it's not a hundred percent, but, um, just because they didn't get knocked out doesn't mean they don't have a concussion. What are your yeah, thoughts on that? And then also what are your thoughts on what you should be doing in that immediate kind of like first 24 hours for someone? Yeah. So, um, I guess to start with every state has a concussion law. Um, and so knowing what your state's law is can help position yourself as a medical provider. So I don't know every single law out mm. there, um, mm. but in Colorado, which is you know where I am, there's three pieces to our law. So I'll just go through them real quickly and then kind of back up. So the mm. first piece is that um, coaches need to be educated every year. And this technically includes club coaches, mm. which would include gymnastics coaches. And yeah. I don't think a lot of coaches know that. Um, so they should be getting some kind of education. The second piece is if there is a suspected concussion, um, you need to remove them from play. And that means the medical provider can do that. Um, If the judge sees someone go down and they're like, oh my gosh, that looked really concerning. And there's a medical provider there, that judge can say, hey, you need to go get checked Mm. out. Um, It's not necessarily up to the coach. the health and safety of the athlete should be the coach's number one priority, but sometimes you kind of forget that I think as a coach and you're like, Oh, we just need to finish the meet. Um, and so I think having the role taken out of the coach's hands is really important. And so then it's the medical provider's decision. Yep. It's not the coach's decision. And then the third piece of the law in Colorado is that um, they have to be cleared 
if, if there is a concussion, the athlete has to be cleared by a certain medical provider. Um, and so there, it, it again, depends on the state. Um, so I think, you know, in that first situation of like, Hey, someone goes down, someone is concerned, whether it's a parent, a coach, a judge, the medical team, then they need to get evaluated and you need to be on the safer side. So if yep. you are worried that they have a concussion, they need to be done. Um, because putting them back out there, especially in gymnastics where again, you're flipping and doing all kinds of um, skills where if your balance is just a smidge off, it yep. could be catastrophic. Yep. Um, you need to take them out, keep them safe. From there, so say someone does get a concussion, unfortunately, and they're maybe going through some of those symptoms. And you talked about kind of like uh, some things that can help speed it up a little bit. Can you share like what are some of those things that might accelerate the recovery of a rehab? Yeah. So um, first is not doing things. The rule of thumb, if things make you feel worse, <laughs> yeah. stop doing it. Yeah. So that's always what I tell my athletes. It's like very common sense and simple, but I think there's so many nitty gritty things you can do that if you always just go back to the, if it makes you feel worse, stop doing it. Yeah. It kind of makes it more simple. Um, so one thing we don't want them to do is totally lay in a dark room and do what we used to call cocoon therapy. Um, now the first day or two, if you just need to like stay at home, not go to school, not go to the gym. Great. But then we want to get kids back in a routine, but still keep them safe things you can do. So making sure you're eating healthy and drinking a lot of water, mm -hmm. um, limiting screens if they're bothering you. So, you know, if you normally play three hours of video games every day, maybe we don't do that. Yep. But if you want to watch a little TV for like 30 minutes and it doesn't make you feel bad, that's totally fine. Cause we want kids to not feel like they're getting punished. Yeah. Um, and you know, go hang out with your friends a little bit. Um, but don't again, like don't go to a loud party. Maybe, yep. um, if you want to go into the gym and stretch a little bit, that's probably okay. But if you're going to go into the gym and stretch and then you're like, well, we'll just do a little bit of tumble <laughs> yeah. back. Yeah. Then maybe we don't go to the gym. Yeah. Um, I totally get the like, like, oh, I'll just do a little bit. Um, so, classic, classic gymnast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with the gymnast at school. Um, so if you're a type A personality, high achieving person, which a lot of our gymnasts are, um, maybe you would just get a little bit of homework sent home to you or you go to school for just two or three hours those first couple days and don't stress about it. It's mm. easier said than done, right? Yeah. So our, you know, AP class honors kid who just keeps pushing through classes um, and makes themselves feel worse. That's not helping them. So just kind of backing off and taking some time to yourself, letting your brain heal. Um, again, I use that analogy. If you broke your arm, we wouldn't let you do handstands, yeah. right? So if your brain is injured, we need to rest the brain. So limiting things that make it feel worse. Have that information. Um, um, and then thinking about like recoveries and stuff. So like, what are, what are the timelines in the research about? Um, I remember you said like there's some progressions there for like how you return back. I'm, my gut instinct is you return back to school first fully before gymnastics. Maybe they're in, in tandem together, but what are like the timelines to move maybe between different stages and what are some of those stages to talk about? Yeah. yeah. So, so for gymnastics, um, you would start with that light aerobic activity still and then maybe a little more vigorous aerobic activity and some maybe easy conditioning. Then I would say step three would be um, more like your more difficult conditioning, maybe starting to go upside down, like doing handstands, cartwheels, walkovers, but on the floor. And again, making sure you're not getting worse with anything. Mm -hmm. And step four, maybe you're doing some run throughs on vault, some kips and casts on bars, um, maybe doing some skills on low beam, um, again, pretty basic skills. Uh, and then floor starting to do some easy tumbling, maybe some tumble track to start. Um, but again, pretty basic. Next step I would say would be step five is, um, timers on vault, um, starting more like giants on bars, clear hips. Again, it's going to depend on like what level you are. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, or what your skill profile is. And then, um, beam, maybe starting to get up a high beam and do some leaps and turns, but no tumbling, no series on beam and then a little bit more difficult on floor. And then step six would probably be getting back to kind of a full practice, yep. maybe having your coach there spotting or just, just being there in case something happens and then a full practice, then a competition. Gotcha. That's good to know. Um, 
And then and I then guess. The, oh, go I was going to, sorry to interrupt. Go um, I was going to say the timeline for that. So every step needs to take at least a day. Gotcha. And so if you're a kid who does two a days, like you're an elite or level 10 or something, we don't want you to do step one in the morning and step two in the afternoon. Gotcha. You need to do like 24 hours in between. Yeah, football steps. and stuff, gotcha. they're more concerned about contact probably, right? And things of that nature. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, my gut assumption would be that in gymnastics, it's probably more about the combination of um, like jostling of your brain with harder impact skills and obviously upside down. But then also the thought process is that more challenging skills are more of a cognitive load. And maybe that's more demanding. Is that possibly what we're getting at here? Yeah, I think it's, um, yeah, you're having to focus a lot more. Gotcha. Whereas like, if you're like, hey, I'm a level 10, I can do, you know, a back handspring on floor all day long and sure. not have to use my brain. Um, whereas if I'm going to get on beam and do layout, layout, step out, I really have to focus and think about it. Yep. And if my balance is a little bit off because of my concussion yeah. um, or, you know, the bright lights are bugging me in the gym and I accidentally looked at the light in the middle of my series, gotcha. you know, so it's, it's a combo of like, hey, let's keep us safe and, um, do the easier skills to start mm-hmm. um, as we and then progress as we're doing well. Super interesting. This is also fascinating.